What's up, guys? Welcome to what might be one of the last episodes of Nash and Arnold's. Uh, I'm not sure how many more we're going to get. I got a couple more workouts this week, taper next week, and then maybe one session of equipped deadlifts between Nationals and the Arnold. Not sure how much of that we're going to be able to film or how much we're going to want to film, but uh, we'll do our best. Ow. Anyways, today was uh, overall a pretty exceptional day. Uh, I came in, did some high bar squats. Those actually felt kind of crappy. Um, couldn't really find my groove with them. They hurt a little bit. They felt a little uh, choppy in terms of the movement. I was having to really slow down at lockout and revert to some of those uh, pain dodging mechanisms. So they weren't quite as snappy or as fluid as I would have liked. The weight moved well enough. Uh, and by the end again, you know, pain lessened. So I think my top single there was about 250 kilos. And then I did a triple at 235 and a triple at 225. Um, yeah, like I said, by the end of those, they felt a lot better. But for the most part, it was hard to kind of catch my groove. That last rep at 225, I'm pretty sure I was right up on my tippy toes. After that, moved on to incline pin press. Up at two and a half kilos, hit a single at 152 and a half kilos, which is a PR on any sort of incline movement. So I was pretty happy about that. It moved at about an eight and a half. And then I did a triple at, what was it, 140? I believe it was 140. Uh, that moved a little bit tougher than I would have liked. Uh, again, I think the pins offer, or the pins do a lot for me, not having to go through that very bottom range of motion. I think my shoulders tend to get a little bit out of position there. Uh, so having the pins set maybe two or three inches off my chest seems to be really, really good in terms of being able to uh, get a lot of weight on the bar and maintain a really smooth, really fluid movement. So that feels like it's carrying over my comp bench. Uh, and if you guys aren't incline pressing as one of your accessory movements, I would give it a shot. It's really, really helped me. So see if it helps you. Give it a shot. So our question of the day today, guys, comes from Nathan Drake. And Nathan says, as a novice lifter, lifting around a lot of better, more experienced lifters, <coughs> excuse me, how do you siphon through all the BS when they all try to help you, but give different advice that contradicts itself? Basically, there's a couple things you wanna look for. Number one, if people are speaking in absolutes and saying, this will definitely help you. This is definitely the answer. This is definitely what you need to do. I would be wary of that. If people are saying, oh, try this, it might work. Chances are the advice is gonna be more sound because that's a better way of presenting advice. Um, it's really hard to speak in absolutes when you're talking about the body and talking about movement because it's so multifactorial meaning there's a whole lot involved with it. So you can't say, oh, if you push your knees out, that's gonna fix everything. Oh, this is the cause of your knee pain or your hip pain, blah, blah, blah. Things like that often aren't, uh, aren't true, aren't that easy to diagnose, aren't that easy to treat, which leads into my next point. Watch out for quick fixes and easy things. Generally, anytime you wanna get better, you wanna eliminate pain, you wanna progress in your lifts, you hit a plateau and you need to break through, it's not as easy as doing, do this exercise, that'll fix everything. Oh, if you add in floor press, your bench is gonna increase. Things like that that sound easy and are quick fixes generally don't work. Another thing that I've noticed and a trend that I've seen, and this might not be true for all cases, but if somebody comes to you and offers you unsolicited advice, most of the time, it's not worth it. It's not true. If somebody comes up to you and is like, oh, hey, you, you gotta do this, gotta do that, blah, 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 and comes up to you and is trying to sell you on something, or trying to present to you information that you don't necessarily need or want, a lot of times that's not necessarily what you need to be paying attention to. And lastly, I would look for trends in the information that you see. If you listen to 10 different people and eight of them are telling you one thing, chances are that's worth investigating more so than the weird ass things those other two people are telling you. So look for trends in the information as to something working or not working. In a lot of cases, popular opinion isn't necessarily the right route to go for your information, but generally if you see recurring trends in things that you're hearing from a number of people, it's worth at least investigating. The number one reason, to, or the number one way rather, to sift through BS is just think critically. Be logical. If somebody tells you something it doesn't make any sense, maybe don't bother investigating it. If somebody tells you something and you're like, oh, I see how this could lead to this and then this, 
and it makes logical sense when you think through it, you kind of break it down, then maybe that's worth investigating. And try stuff out. Don't be afraid to listen to a whole bunch of different people. Try a whole bunch of different stuff, especially as a novice lifter. It's gonna take you time to figure out what works for you, what drives your progress, what ways of moving keep you pain free or keep you progressing or make you stronger. So don't be afraid to try stuff, but give things a good shot. If you're gonna try different programs, give each program a full run through, a full shot. It's four to eight weeks. See if you see progress. Same thing with movements. If you're gonna change your stance width, your toe angle, and your hand position on the squat, maybe do them one at a time. So you can figure out, okay, this has this impact without changing everything, and then being like, oh, this feels better, this feels worse. Well, why? Which one of those things that you changed led to that change in your movement that was beneficial? Try things slowly, think critically, look for trends in your information, and be wary of people trying to sell you stuff. That's all I got for today. I'm gonna go do some suited deadlifts. And those went swimmingly today. I was super stoked with how those went. Uh, pulled my top single at 367 and a half kilos, up just two and a half from last week. I'll take 370 uh, in my very last heavy suited deadlift of this training cycle. And if it moves anything like today's rep moved, I'm in a very good place for the Arnold. Beyond that, I did a set of five in my suit at 340 kilos, and that felt so good that I felt the need to bench the bar back into the ground like a real big douchebag on my final rep. Um, I'm usually against stuff like that, but I, uh, I went against my own plans and designs for this training cycle, was a little bit hyped up. I had some, uh, some of the new Harm's Way album in my ears, and uh, it just felt too good not to. I got caught up in the moment, you guys. Got emotional, forgive me. After that, what did I do next? Oh, I did Ram Bench, and again, up another two and a half kilos, no signs of things slowing down. I hit 210 kilos for a nice smooth single, and then 200 kilos for a triple, which is friggin' awesome. I'm super stoked with how that's feeling, how that movement goes or is going. I'm not getting any shoulder pain. My, my body's holding up really well with the benching variations that I'm doing with all the volume, with all the exposures to heavy singles. So uh, I attribute a little bit of that to the grip change and a little bit of that to movements that take a little bit off the very bottom end. I'm not doing low pin, or sorry, I'm not doing low pin press, uh, like comp pin press. I'm not doing long pause stuff right now. I'm just doing my comp bench, incline pin press, where it's a little bit off my chest, and uh, dumbbell bench. Maybe that's contributing to my shoulder health. Hard to say. Anyways, my shoulders are feeling really, really good. Um, I'm not having to get any sort of treatment on them. I'm not having to worry too much about my movements. Everything's kind of clicking right now. So that's really awesome. Overall, this training cycle is going really, really well. Um, yesterday I hit a 799 kilo total in the gym at 8RP. Um, if you guys are interested in seeing those lifts, check out my Instagram, Calgary Barbell. Uh, but I hit a 276.5, yes, 276.5 kilo squat, and that felt really, really good. Hit 172 and a half kilos on the bench, and then a 350 kilo deadlift all at eight. So hoping for uh, maybe even a total PR, maybe PRing my bench and deadlift, maybe getting back up into close to PR territory in my squat. I'm very hopeful about this meet. Um, everything feels pretty damn good. Weights are feeling good. Things are moving well. Uh, I mean, knock on wood, but I'm thinking I'm gonna come out strong here. And I'm really excited for the Arnold. Uh, there's usually, I don't know, a couple thousand people in attendance and the pro deadlift is on the rogue stage. Never been involved in anything um, with that kind of attendance before. Uh, IPF Worlds in, in Pilsen was fantastic. It was really, really cool experience because of the, the scale of it and the grandeur and how professional everything was, was uh, run. But this is gonna be, in terms of sheer numbers and people watching, it's gonna be a really, really cool experience. But I just figured I'd touch on some, I don't know, some sort of wrap up and concluding thoughts on the training cycle because like I said, I'm not sure how many more of these we're gonna do. But that's it for today. I wanna to thank everybody for tuning in and coming along with us on this mystical journey to Nash and Arnold's. And uh, we're gonna have some more cool stuff coming up. After this, I'm gonna start training for Classic Worlds, also here in Calgary, which I'm super, super jazzed about. And after that, maybe get healthy. Make my hip stop hurting. We'll see. Anyways, I don't know if you guys have seen this thing here. 
but we are gonna have zip hoodies available very soon. I say this all the time, but it's hype. We're hyping you guys up. Um, new hats. These shirts are currently available if you're interested. And that's the end of my shameless plugs. We'll see you guys in the next video. Leave a like if you liked it. Ask us some more questions of the day. I really love having that sort of discussion segment in the middle of these videos. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.